Hi folks, my name is Dan Lenny from fstopacademy.com. I'm a cameraman, editor, producer, and moving into color grading. Now, I must say right from the outset, I do not want to try and replace the role of a colorist by any stretch of the imagination. But a lot of my projects, I've currently been using Magic Bullet Loops and the likes. But da, uh, da Vinci Resolve 9 has come out and the light version is entirely free. And it's a very powerful piece of software. And I'm running it here on a 27 inch iMac. I think it's a 3.4 gigahertz machine here. I've got 12 gigabytes of RAM um, and it's got a two gigabytes graphic card. I'm using Final Cut X predominantly for all my editing. And now that Resolve Lite has become available version nine, the entire user interface has become a lot easier to use. And so I wanted to share with you my journey moving into color grading um, using some exciting new software from Blackmagic and this these set of panels here from Tangent Devices. But just before we get to these panels and why I think they're such a useful addition to your suite, um, let me just take you through a very, very brief tour of getting started with DaVinci Resolve 9. Now, as I say, I'm not a colorist, um, but if you shoot and you understand lighting, then all we're really doing here is learning how to use this technology, this software and this machine here. Because if you understand shadows, highlights, light, color, primary color, secondary colors, this would become very, very intuitive. And I think what I've discovered certainly in the last few weeks that I've been using it is I've found it a very invigorating and liberating experience to be color grading. And using these panels here, this is called a tangent element panels. And there's actually four panels here. As you can see here, they actually disconnect. So what you're able to do with this is to you know, invest in stages if you want to. So let me just show you now how to get started with this panel. So we're using DaVinci Resolve Lite, which is entirely free and is very practically fully functioning. So really there's not much you can't do with light. And certainly in this kind of setup, it's a great way to get started. There are four components to this. This is the tracker ball section. This is the multi-function section. And then we have the button section and the knob section. Pretty uh, straightforward. And it is, and it's a, it's a panel that can work across a number of different systems. So the first thing we have to do is tell DaVinci Resolve what panel we're using. So let me just log in here. And I've already got a demo set up. So first thing you do is go to your preferences uh, and just check that it's set up. It's already set up here to tangent devices element panel. There's a number of other panels you can use. Um, I happen to think these represent not just great value, but um, the artist color one from Avid actually works using an IP address and an ethernet cable. And so, you know, to me, that's a whole world of pain. Also, I've got uh, an iMac here. And so this just plugs in using mini USB connectors. And then what I've got here is a multi, um, I've got this all tied up here. I've got a multi uh, USB port uh, hub here so that each of the panels plugs into that. I've got other things plugged in as well. And that just goes into a pan to the USB connector in the back of my iMac. Um, and then they just use these mini USB connections on the back. And that only not only powers the system, but also communicates as well. So it's very, very simple. And that's one of the things I like about it. So we've got the tangent devices element panel here. If you were setting this for the first time, um, it would ask you to reboot or restart DaVinci Resolve. But I've already got this set up. Um, I, I'm not going to go into a huge uh, explanation of how DaVinci Resolve works because you know I'm still learning it myself. But what I will say is you have to set your scratch disks, which just like in any other software, you just set a disk that you want to store all your media. Uh, and if you've got any video capture hardware, I'm using a Blackmagic Ultra Studio 3D and that just automatically picks it up. And um, so that's all you need to, to worry about in this section here. So I have pulled in some files into this master media pool. And when I go to conform that, it should show up as um, media here. See, that's all fine. Now let's just go to the coloring room. Um, 
First of all, the most important part of the system is the tracker balls, because that helps and relates to your lift, gamma, and gain. Um, you know, rather than having to move things with a mouse, if you wanted to make that all magenta, for example, um, you can use the track pads and the balls to, to, to move the parameters around within the frame. But when it comes out of the box, um, this isn't, to tie it into DaVinci Resolve, you need to set the sensitivity of your control surface. So you do that in this section here, which is the um, project settings. And you can look at your control panel. You'll notice here the default setting is set to 50. Now you wanna have them up around about 80. Otherwise you're gonna be kind of pushing the, the balls around and not really getting anywhere. Now, this is something that obviously you will find and set for your own benefit. Uh, at the moment, the software seems to, you know, seems to go through manually and set everything um, bit by bit. So it's worth doing because obviously you set up correctly and it saves you a lot of hassle. Um, it'd be nice if there was a, a kind of master setting where you could just set everything. But you know, at the moment, this is still in beta mode, so Hopefully that'll be something that the guys at Blackmagic will look at resolving. And you know, listen, I'm, I'm not complaining. This software is free and it's absolutely incredible. Um, so we'll just mark this up to 80. So now we've set the sensitivity of panels, I wanna open up a new project and start showing you some of the functionality here. So go to your home folder and select new. So we'll call this um, resolve test new and create that. Now, the first thing you wanna do is, is save that project. So save project, then you can go into your settings and set your auto save to on. And you can set that to anything you want. I wanna set it to 10 minutes. It, Autosave doesn't come up automatically. You have to save your project first, then engage autosave. So I now have a resolve test new project, which we're going to use. Now, I'm gonna open that project. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna go into my settings here, my project settings, and I'm gonna set my playback frame rate to 25p, because that's what I'm working on. It's all defaulted to 24. And then what's important is that you set your custom conform options, rather your conform options to 25 also and save that. It's very important that you do that before you bring any media in. Now I've got here uh, a, a QuickTime movie. It's a ProRes QuickTime that I've just pulled in. And what I'm going to do is right click that and use scene cut detection. And that will just analyze the movie and it will process and tell me where it thinks the cuts are. And it's a really useful way when you're working without an EDL or if you're just using a, a, you know, a, a, a quick time movie that you come, that's come into you. We've got 16 shots, so I'm gonna add these cuts to media pool. It's asking me, am I sure I want these parameters? Frame rate is 25, don't wanna use drop frame, uh, use a time code embedded in the source clip. There we go, okay. Now what that's done, is that's taken all the clips and added them to the media pool. And now when I go to conform that sequence, what it's done is it's broken up the clips into separate cuts. Now, yeah, it's just taken a while to load here. Uh, this is a little bit slow tonight because first of all, it's a 1080p project and really, Resolve Lite on an iMac is only designed to do 720, but it will do 1080 quite comfortably. Um, it'll just be a bit stuttery. So that's the first step. In the next video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how we actually start the coloring process. So I hope that's been of some use and we'll dig more into using these element panels in the next video as well.